In this video, we will take a look at Blender's direct modeling tools. These are the tools we will be using day to day when it comes to generally poorly modeling our objects, such as, such as extrude, bevel, bridge, knife, and so on. This is in contrast to the more procedural tools, such as the modifiers. Now, the first thing we will take a look at is how can we actually delete things in Blender? This is a little bit of a quirk of Blender, and we just have to talk about it before proceeding. Now, if you select some of these polys just by going into edit mode, hitting the tab key and simply selecting the polygons with the left mouse button. Now you hit the X key and you can see that we have already brought up the Pi menu for deletion. This is in contrast to if you if you click, for instance, the delete key, now you get up the old menu for this. But regardless, the information is the same in either, either one of them. Now you can see that we have two options which are relating to faces. The, the other ones here aren't relevant whatsoever because we're dealing with polygons right now. We're dealing with faces. So you can see here we have delete faces and we have dissolve faces. And let's take a look at what they're actually doing. By going to dissolve faces, you can see that this actually deletes the edges. This is like it merges the face together without any of the edges connecting it. If we undo that, control Z, and we on the other hand use X and then delete faces, now you can see it actually deletes the faces around here. Now, if we do the same for the edges as well, and we hit the X key, now you can see we have dissolve edges and delete edges. And what you can see if we do delete edges now, you can see that the edges per se are deleted through it, but the skeletal structure is still there. This is something I, I never really use. I never ever really use delete edges. I always use dissolve edges. So that's something to be aware of. Delete edges is what you most likely want to use. You can also hit the hotkey control X for dissolve edges as well. Instead of going into the menu and going down here, I simply just hit the control X key and this removes it quite nicely. So when you delete something, most of the time you want to, for polygons, you want to use delete edges. And for this, I use the menu. I, I just go up here and just use the menu. Or for edges, I hold down, I just select the edge loop, Alt click on it, and then Control X. Now you can also customize this, of course, if you prefer to have, uh, for instance, you prefer to have uh, delete edges or so delete faces set to Control X. You can of course easily do that as well. So that's deletion for you, pretty nice and simple. Now let's just delete the entire object, select it here, and just hit the X key. And then we'll go through the various objects we have in our scene. We've set it up in collections so that it's easy for you to, to follow along and you can use very specific examples like the extrude tool, which is the first tool we are going to be looking at. Select the tool, let's select the polygon you want. Simply just click on the eye icon here and we'll have it selected. Now select the polygon you want and then we hit the E key. E for extrude, very nice and simple. You can see we have some options down here as well, but in general, you just wanna keep this nice and simple. Now, if you extrude something now, this is very important to talk about. If you extrude something and then you hit the right mouse button, you're gonna be canceling it. But what you're actually canceling is not the extrusion, it's the translation. So let's say you're doing an extrusion now, now you're creating bad geometry because let's scale it down you can actually see that the extrusion is still there. And this is one of the key mistakes people make when they are modeling in Blender. They extrude up like this, and then they extrude and they right mouse button and they're like, all right, it's fine, because they assume it's fine. And then they extrude again, and they extrude again, and they extrude again, and let's just insert a loop here. So now you can just see that this line here is darker than the other ones. And this is due to the fact that you now have geometry exactly on top of each other. You can also find these tools under the left mouse button as well. You can find all the tools we're talking about either here, or you can find them under the different menus up here as well, if you prefer to do that, or if you want to use this menu here as a starting point of your hotkeys. For instance, here you can see extrude faces. You also have more extrude tools under here as well. You see here current set to extrude uh, to cursor, but you can also just quickly set this to extrude region, and that's the same thing as before. Another cool little tip as well for this is, this is a tool they recently added. I'll just have to add a loop here. We'll talk about this in a second, how to add a loop. But if you now select a polygon here, 
and set this to extrude manifold. See what happens now. It actually <laughs> removes it down. It actually just scales it in like so. It creates bad geometry, but it's really cool for concepting. It's a very powerful tool if you want to move something down like this instead of having to go in and out and, uh, and start to cut and all that. This is fantastic for concepting as you're now just creating really cool extrusions in your model like so. This is when we care more about the shape. So extrusion, very simple. Select a tool, hit the E key and just move it up. You can also scale it down with the S key and you can move it up and down with the G key. G and Z and that's gonna move it up and down like so. Then next up, we have extrude cursor. Now, if we check, take a look at this as well, what this will do, this will extrude to our cursor. And if we go into, if we select the polygon, and then we go under here, which is extrude manifold currently, and we do extrude to cursor. Now, wherever we click now, this is where it's gonna be extruding to. And this looks a little bit chaotic. And in this case, it very much is. But if we go into something like the front view now, just hit the tilde key and then front view. And now you can see that you can build almost like this like armature structure. Really useful if you're doing something more ornate or if you're doing maybe a base for some kind of prop or maybe even if you're doing some, some kind of character work. So now you can see how quickly you can block something out using the extrude to cursor tool. And then we have extrude along normals. Extrude along normals is really handy. Let's say you want to add some thickness to this, not in a procedural sense using modifiers, but you actually want to add thickness to it. Select everything, we're hitting the A key, and then we can go under this menu here, and we can do extrude along normals. And now you can see we have this, we have this little gizmo, which allows us to do this. Now, so if we can do this now, now we can extrude it out, and now you can see that we have some nicely extruded normals. A little issue now is that you can see that the normals are really soft. So what we can do, we can go into the object mode, hit the tab key for that, right mouse button, and then shade flat. And now you can see we're back to this nice shaded flat view. This is normal how I prefer to work in uh, in Blender when it comes to models because I'm seeing it in an honest fashion. But if we do if we undo a little bit now and we select everything and then we extrude this inwards, you can now see that we have to flip our normals. You can all see that there is a quick little button for that here, but this doesn't know, do exactly what I want to do. So what I can do is I can just commit to this, hit the A key, now everything is selected. Then I can hit the space bar and you can search for flip normals. And now you see where we have a command. The space bar is really useful. This is, can be used in a case where, for instance, you don't know exactly what the hotkey is or you don't know where it is. So now by doing this, we can see that it lives under mesh normals and hotkey is alt N. So now you can click here and then we have it, which means if you want to find this in the future, you can go under mesh, normals, and you can flip. Or if you want to do this with a hotkey, you can hit alt and N. And now you can see that we have a menu for our normals and just hit flip here. So this is just a nice opportunity for us to talk about how we can use the space bar to find something like this. For instance, let's say you want to, you have no idea what extrude tool is, you have up to the interface or something. You can just type extrude and now we have extrude along normals. And there we go. Then we have the loop cut. The loop cut is one of the tools gonna to be using all the time. This is the tool I just used briefly before in the examples. And this is where you can simply insert the loop into the model. The hotkey for that is Control and R. You see it down here in the bottom right now. And this allows you to simply click and now you can move around like so. Simply just click and drag. As you can see with Blender, it's very immediate. It's very gesture based. So now you just move it based on where the cursor is then left mouse button to commit to it, or right mouse button, which again, doesn't cancel out the operation itself. What it does is cancel out how much it's gonna slide from one side to another, which means that now it's gonna be in the center. So if you very quickly want to add a loop in the center, you hit control R, you hit left mouse button once, and it doesn't matter if it goes up and down, and then you use the right mouse button, and now it's gonna be exactly in the center. You see up here, right mouse button goes in the center. So if you want to be in a specific spot though, control R, move it up where you want to be, and then just left mouse button, and there we go. Now you can see here, if you want multiple cuts, you can do that. If you want to change the smoothness of it, you can do that. You can do all sorts of, or all sorts of cool stuff with this as well. You can like slide around like this. It's generally a very powerful tool. So just control R, and then you just insert it right away. This is a tool you're gonna be using all the time.
There isn't a way of inserting a loop, as far as I know, right where your cursor is. So let's say you want to insert the loop right here. You can't just hit insert loop at this specific spot. You have to hit control R and then you just slide it up to where you want. Then we have the bevel tool. Bevel tool is really handy and you can find this on control and B. So with this active, we can alt click on the edge then simply control B. And now you can see that we can add a bevel to this. And with this tool, we actually have a lot of different options. For instance, we can change it to vertices, which will actually bevel the verts, change it back to edges, and we can change the width of this. We can change the segments of it. We can change the shape of it as well, if it goes in or out, if it's concave or convex. So there are really a lot of options with the bevel tool. It's a really powerful tool in general. We can do a bevel here as well. And now we can just start to add a bevel. And then we can go back and we can set this to be one. And now we can just use the offset like so, and we can still just enable some of these. And then we can set the shape back to one. And there we go. Now we have a really nice and sharp shape. So the bevel tool, really handy. This, this is this tool I use all the time when it comes to sharpening up my, uh, my loops like this. Then we have the joint vert tool. Joint vert is really useful and the hotkey for that is J, J for join. What this allows you to do is select two verts, hit the J key, and now we have a line or an edge between these two. This is really cool as well because you have multiple edges. And you hit the J key and it will go through all of them. You can also go through multiple loops, select one here, select there, and it's just gonna go through all of them. It doesn't really care about creating bad topology or anything like that. It will just do what you tell it to and be like, yes, sir, I will go from here to here. So this is really useful and the hotkey is again, J. Little tip, if you want this to go from here to here, here, you just select the in-betweens and now it's just going to nicely go between these. Then we have one of the tools you're gonna be using all the time, and this is the knife tool. This is similar to the multi-cut if you've used Maya, or just the general cutting tools in any other software. The hotkey for that is K, K for knife, because English is a consistent language. Now we can simply just cut from one point to another, basically just cut every, anywhere you want to. And then if you want to commit to the cut, you hit the space bar, and now this has been committed. This is a tool you're gonna to be using a lot when you're doing any kind of poly modeling. Again, K, and now we can do some more cuts like so. And if you want to do more cuts, let's say you want to do a cut over here as well, you hit the E key. E is really handy because this allows you to continue cutting. It means you don't have to commit to the cut right away. And if you are happy with this, now just hit the space bar and we're good to go. This tool is also cool because this allows you to cut from one side to another. You can just cut like this. Oh, it's a little crazy. So we can just cut around like this, hit the space bar, and I can see there's a cut going all the way through, like so. So just hit the K key, and then just drag from one side to another, and space bar, and there we go. Now the K key is a little bit awkward because it's awfully far to the right on the keyboard. So you might want to set this to something else. Uh, just if you do a lot of poly modeling, I just prefer to have everything, basically all my hotkeys on my left hand so I can use all that right away. What, you, what I also recommend you to do is just to get a reminder that all the way on the bottom here, you can see all the different uh, commands and all the little help of all the little help tools for this specific tool. So that's really useful and highly recommend that you do that. So that's really useful and highly recommend that you look into every single one of them. We're not gonna go through each tool in depth here because honestly, what I'm showing you now is gonna be good enough for most cases. But if you really want to go in depth, you don't have to watch a tutorial on it. You simply just click on a tool you want and just go down to the bottom and you can just see what's going on. The next up, we have Merge Verts. This is, uh, this is a tool we set up when it comes to Merge Verts to Center. So if you've been following along so far, you can simply select these two, hit Shift X, and now it's going to do that. If not, the hotkey is going to be M, M for merge. And so now we can do at first, we can change this to at center, we can change it to first, at last. So this is just a really handy way. You can also do collapse, which collapses to the center. 
So this is a pretty handy tool like that. And I highly recommend that you set up a hotkey for this as soon as possible, because in during poly modeling, this is something you're gonna be doing a lot. Speaking of merging verts, there's a little related tool which is really useful when it comes to this. And that is, you can see that all these verts are really close together. And it's a bit annoying to do this by hand. So we can merge by distance as, and we can do this if we go under tool, options, auto merge. And now we can set a threshold for this, like so. So now everything which will be in within a certain distance of this will be merged together. So now let's say we want to go in here, select this one, hit the G key, Z, and go up. Now you can see that when it's, it's within the distance, it's going to just merge together like so. So this is a great feature when it comes to this. If you want to hit G and Z for this as well, once it gets close, once it gets within that threshold, it's just gonna merge automatically. So you're gonna be doing this a lot for a cleanup. So we're just gonna we're just gonna be disabling this for now because otherwise we will cause all sorts of mayhem with the with the remaining tools. Then we have join objects. Join objects is very simple. This is uh, if you use Maya, this is the combined feature in Maya. You want this and this to be in the same object. You hit Control J, and voila, they are now combined into one object. So we're going to edit mode, and now we see we have combined these two. Separate is exactly the opposite of that. If we select everything now, just go into edit mode, hit the A key, and then we hit, if we hit the P key, you can now see we have separate. And now you can do by selection, by material, and by loose parts. By selection is going to take the selected object into a new object. Material is going to separate by material, and loose parts is going to be loose parts by individual polygon islands. For instance, here, the eyes are not connected. So now if we hit separate, by loose parts, it's going to separate out the eyes and the head into one shape. If you want to do by the selection, we do the same thing. We select it, hit the P key, and then by selection. And now you can see that these are now extracted into one. So this is like the separate and the extract feature in Maya combined into one tool like this. Then we have fill. Fill is one of the coolest tools in Maya. If you alt click on a on a hole like this, and with the F key, now this is simply gonna fill it in like so. There's nothing special about this when it comes to this, it's simply just, you simply alt click and the F key, and now it fills it in like so. Where this becomes very handy though, is that if you wanna fill in this, you can, but if you just select this single edge here, this one to the side, and with the F key, now you can see what it's doing. It actually fills it in and it bridges, bridges it at the same time. We can do the same thing here, just pick shortest path, just select one, select the other, X, and then we delete face. And now if you hit the F key again, you're gonna see how it fills it in. This is a crazy, crazy good tool, and I haven't really seen this in any other 3D software, at least not this intuitively. Obviously, you can just bridge this as well, but the fact that you can just hit, hit the F key for this is really nice. You don't even have to hit it. Check it out, I'm just gonna hold it down, and now it just fills it in like so. So that's enough geeking out over the fill tool. Let's look into a similar tool, which is grid fill. This is also very nice. Now, we are just gonna be selecting the center. Uh, we're gonna be center, like, selecting the center loop here, which goes all the way around. Then we're gonna be hitting the space bar and we're gonna type grid fill. And there we go, grid fill. And now you can see that this has now filled in our entire square. We can also set the spans, change the amount of spans we have. You're gonna set this to four, this is the default, and we can offset it. You can see that by default, it's actually a bit off center, which is really annoying because currently, you know, if you wanna cut this up into some pieces, that doesn't work. But if we just do this a few more times, you can see that this now offsets it. So if you need to fill in some holes, this is a phenomenal tool. Then we have bridge. Bridge is essentially the same tool as in all other 3D software. There's very, really nothing special about this whatsoever. You select one edge, alt click on it here, shift, alt click here. Then you can go and use the hotkey we set up, which in this case is the, the slash key, which is the one right above the left windows key. If you haven't set that up, you can go to edge and you can do bridge edge loops like so. 
And here you can also set, for instance, the number of cuts, how many segments are in the middle, and you can also set the twist as well. This is really handy because now you can really create some cool twists. Or if for some reason this doesn't cut up properly, let's say this cuts like this, and now you have to, and now you have to actually do a bridge. Uh, now you actually have to do a bridge. Now you can do the the twists to get it, to get it back. But in games like this, actually, you can just hold on the F key, and there you go. This is actually a way I, I often do bridging, is I select this one, delete face, then I select this, hit the F key, and then I just hold on the F for a few, a few times. It just depends on the situation. The, the fill tool is really handy, but if you don't want to use that, simply use select alt click, alt click, and then use the hotkey for bridge. Now the next tool we're going to take a look at is the slide tool. This is a really useful tool which you're going to be using all the time. In order to use it, you simply just alt click on the loop you want. Then you type double G. So just hit G and then G again. Now you can see you can slide this up and down like so. Alt click, double G and move it up like so. Really useful. You can even you do it down here with the numerical part as well. Then we're going to take a look at grow and shrink. This is a really useful tool which allows you to move stuff up based on its normal. Select the, all the polygons in this little tube and hit Alt and S. And now you can just scale it up based on its normal. So if you want to make this tube really thin, you can just leave it like so. Or if you want to make this a lot bigger, Alt and S, and now you can just scale it up to be massive. So a really handy tool in order to basically scale things up and down based on its normal. All right, the last tool of the direct modeling tools are going to be repeat last. This sounds a little bit like Maya, but it's not, unfortunately. It's not as powerful as Maya, but it's kind of in the same vein. Let's say we want to add a bevel to this edge here. We can now hit Control B and we can add a bevel. And now we have the same settings as before. We can just change this to be maybe like this. And then let's say we want to repeat this on another edge. We can simply select the edge and then hit Shift and R. And now you can see this is being repeated on this edge as well. So the repeat last is really useful if you want to repeat the actual last modeling command. I honestly don't tend to use this a whole lot, but it's still pretty handy to know about. There are times where you really just want to repeat exactly the same last thing as you did before. And now you can do that, shift, shift R, and it was just gonna repeat the same thing as you did before. Now let's talk quickly about proportional modeling. This is what's known as soft selection in other software. If you want soft selection, you can simply just hit a vert like this, just anything, just have any selection. Then we can go up here and you can see we have proportional editing. If you click that and use the G key now to move stuff around, now you can see that we have a fall off. And now you can just move things around like so. And you adjust the fall off with the scroll wheel up and down. So now we can just very easily and nicely just move this around like so. So we know from before that the eyes of the monkey are not connected to the rest of the head. So let's say we want to only move those or move everything apart from the eyes. We can go and select this vert, go up to the settings here, and then we can enable connected only. And now we can start to move this around like so. And now you can see that only the connected parts are actually being moved. So with soft select, it's very nice and easy. Proportional editing, as it's called in Blender. Select the move tool, hit the O key to enable or disable it, and use the scroll wheel up and down to change the influence, and then go to the settings and use connected only if you want that. You can also change the presets here as well for the curve. But in general, I find that the smooth is more than enough. Then the very last thing we are going to talk about is going to be duplication and instancing. We've already briefly talked about duplication and that is done by Shift and D. But what if we want to instance our model? We can easily do that as well if we hit Alt and D. Now if you move this up, you see that these are now the same model. But if we change one of them, this is also going to change around as well. So that's how we do instances in Blender. We'll talk a bit more about instances in the data, but we actually talk a little bit more about how to actually, like how it actually works under the hood. But as a quick teaser for that, the way you stop an instance is if we go to the data object properties, which is the green button here, 
it says object object data properties and then there is a shield and there's a number two this shows how many instances there are so if you do alt d again it's going to be three if you do four five six and so on so if you want this one to be on instance you simply click on this guy right there and now all the other ones are going to be changed but this guy is going to stay if you want this guy to be on instance we simply click, click here and then this guy's also on instance well all the other guys are part of the same happy instance family so that's it for the modeling chapter we have a lot more cool things when it comes to modeling later on particularly when it comes to modifiers. So um, I think you'll look forward to that as well.